so I put on my Twitter a couple of weeks ago that I was going to a meeting in London with Podshow. Um, now, as you're probably aware, Podshow is the company that promotes and hosts um, the photo walkthrough show, uh, and also the company that helps us find sponsors like GoDaddy. Thanks very much. Um, so I went to this Podshow meeting a couple of weeks ago, and I was sat at the back of the the back of the room with Chris Marquardt, um, sat at the back like like the naughty schoolboys, and they'd got a presentation going on at the front. And um, uh, Adam Curry and Ron Bloom actually showed up and did a presentation for us, which was fantastic. Um, very surprised to, to see that it was actually Ron Bloom that did most of the talking, which is which is a surprise when if you if you're familiar with Adam Curry as a, as a podcaster, you expect him to be the one that does all the talking, but but not in business meetings it seems. So anyway, uh, very very interesting meeting, and part way through they had a little screen. Well, actually it was a big screen, but it was a long way away, um, showing slides, and one of those slides um, had a, a, a couple of show promo images on it. And one of them I could see was clearly um, the front of a camera lens. Now, it had something written across it, but I couldn't for the life of me make out what it was. It was too far away. So I started craning forward to try and read it. And after a couple of minutes trying to focus my eyes, I suddenly realised that what it said on this image was photowalkthrough.com. And I can only assume that what's happened is that at some point, Podshow have promoted my show on the homepage of podshow.com. And because they didn't have access to this landscape image, what they did was they picked an appropriate photography-related image, which was this camera lens. And they put our, our um, logo across the front of that. It's a very straightforward logo. It's just photo walkthrough written in Arial. It's nothing, nothing magical about it. Um, and uh, they put that across this, this camera lens image uh, and, and used that on the homepage of podshow.com. Now, uh, while I was sat there looking at this, this kind of gave me a bit of an epiphany. Um, I realise that this image, as much as I like this image, this is one of my photos, this is, I think, representative of the kind of thing I do on the show, and I've thrown that on the floor now, um, but that image there, to somebody who doesn't know the show, it doesn't mean anything. It doesn't mean this is a photography show, this just means it could be anything at all. So what really captured my attention about this camera image that, that Podshow had used was that even without being able to read the words on the image, I could see that it was something to do with photography. And those are the people I want to reach. I want people to see Photo Walkthrough or, or um, any of the promotional material related to Photo Walkthrough and know instantly it's about photography. So I have uh, changed my image. Um, I shot this specifically for this task. Um, it's not the same as the image that Podshow used. Um, it's quite quite a bit different, really. Um, in particular, I wanted to get some highlights on the lens where um, there was space to put my typography across it. And as, as you've seen many times, um, I like to have uh, different colours in the typography. So it was a bit of a challenge getting um, some light on there that, that, that allowed me to do that. But... Um, I hope you'll agree that that is a lot more photography related um, than the old landscape image. Um, I'm not 100% sure yet whether or not I'm going to switch to using this image everywhere. I probably should for the consistency of branding, um, but that means changing my opening credits and all sorts of things. Um, but as usual, I welcome all your feedback on the subject. Let me know if you like the image, if you can tell what it is, um, particularly in all the different crops that I use it uh, in. Um, uh, or if you've got any suggestions for improvement, I, I'm, I love that feedback. Anytime people engage about photography, that really interests me. So um, I did shoot this image specifically for this purpose. And this week, what I'm going to show you is how I actually took the picture. So here goes. OK, we're ready to take the shot. Um, so what I'm going to do, I've got the camera on the tripod here uh, facing down the front of the Sigma lens already. I've got my daylight bulb, which is just a nice size to hold in my hand. So if I just turn that on, you can see that's quite a bright light. It's actually, uh, having seen this on the film, it, it doesn't even look quite as bright on the film as it does in my in my hand. Just just looking at it here, it's, it's an extremely bright light. So um, what I'm trying to what I'm trying to do here, I'm going to hold the the daylight bulb quite close to my lens, so that what I'm getting is the reflection of that white light off the uh, the lens elements inside the sigma lens. Um, and those lens elements, if you look down the front of your own lenses, you'll know that the coatings on those lenses give some nice, uh, interesting colours and some sort of spectrums. And, uh, all sorts of interesting colours coming off the front there. And in this case, the colours I'm getting are some lovely pinks and blues. 
and um, what I've done, um, just manually focusing down the front of the lens, um, I need this in order to see, but just manually focusing here, I've focused on a part of the lens that's actually inside the Sigma lens. So um, what I've got in the foreground, I've got some, some of these coloured reflections in the foreground that are sort of out of focus in, in the nearest the camera and you can't really see that they're sort of lens elements except for the fact that you get these lovely washes of colour over in the corner which is what's going to help me out when it comes to put when I come to put my logo over the top of that because what I'm after here is um, a portion in the a portion in the top left of this promo image that is going to be suitable for putting my logo over the top and as you've seen the logo is is really just a piece of typography and um, I, I need a um, a sort of a transition in the top left corner between light and dark so that I can put the dark portion of the word uh, uh, walk through over, over a lighter sex section of the image and the light portion of the word photo over the dark portion of the image. So um, there's a certain amount of experimentation to go on here to, to achieve that but basically I'm after uh, a section in the top left of the image that is, that is interesting but different so that I can put the logo on that. So I'm shooting, um, I've chosen uh, I've chosen a, an f-stop of, of f11 which is going to give me a reasonable depth of field. Macro lenses tend to have a fairly small depth of field um, so I've chosen something that's going to give me um, in macro terms quite a lot but in, <laughs> in, in non-macro terms not, not, not a great deal but it's, it's enough to be suggestive of the inside of a lens and you can see those glass elements inside the shot that are coming out um, and in particular I've got some nice striping lenses tend to have these sort of um, stripe sections that are, are good for avoiding reflections inside the lens so what I've done is I've focused on one of those and that at least makes it look a bit sort of uh, like a bit of the lens and I'm getting some bits in focus some bits out of focus and hopefully the same will be true of the reflected light of the lens coatings as well so um, so I've got this child of the field which is left 11 for that um, for my uh, ISO uh, obviously you tend to want to go for the lowest ISO you can in order to get as little grain as possible um, unless you're intentionally going for grain but um, uh, in this case I've chosen uh, uh, ISO 200 uh, just because it's a sort of a nice middle of the road relatively low ISO I'm going to get a nice clean image from that what I want for, for this promo image is to keep it um, as useful and as clean as possible and if I want to dirty it up later in Photoshop I will but I want to have the best pixel quality I can out of the image when I take it. So uh, ISO 200, F11, in order to expose this right um, I, I did a lot of, this is not the first time I've taken this shot, I did a lot of messing around and experimentation. It was an extremely difficult shot to meter because I've got um, reflected lights in the corner and, and this thing that I'm going to be holding with my hand, uh, the light moves around so I, I basically took a series of test shots and tweaked the, the shutter speeds up and down and tweaked the apertures up and down just to, try and get those those elements of the, the exposure right. Um, I'm not going to go through the long tedious process of getting this particular exposure right with you. I just wanted you to see how I would take the shot um, and to see that, that, that this isn't doesn't have to be um, uh, you know a state-of-the-art photo studio. So uh, it's just a desk with a lens on it and, and, a, and a light in my hand. So um, I'm shooting I think a sixth of a second and, um, and I'll just take a couple of shots and then we can get them into Lightroom and you can see the next step of the process. So here we go. So I'm just holding, and I've got to get, my, um, I've got to get my, my composition right. I am zoomed in quite a long way here. I'm, I'm not attempting to get the full circle of the front of the lens. I've zoomed in again to, uh, as usual, uh, I tend to abstract and simplify as much as possible um, and in this case I'm abstracting to bits of inside the lens so I've got just sort of three quarters of the circle of um, the part of the lens that I've focused on inside and I'm holding the light here as close to the lens as I can and that's giving me, uh, you'll see on the final shot um, sort of diagonals of light in the top left and diagonals of light in the bottom right and what I'm going to do, I'm just going to try a quick test shot Okay, now that was quite a long exposure, so allow me to just uh, turn that off. I'll pause you. 
Okay, and I'm back, and the piece of important macro photography gear that, gear that I forgot was the remote shutter release, which is just plugged in here on the side of the camera, um, and this obviously is just going to allow me to press the shutter button without shaking the camera. This is a good solid tripod, but it doesn't matter how solid your tripod is, when you're, you're pushing down the shutter button on the actual camera, this thing is going to move just a little bit when you when you do that. So um, remote shutter release very useful. If you haven't got a remote shutter release, use the timer on your camera. Um, it's slightly annoying with with these higher end Canon cameras because the the only timer time you can choose is 10 seconds, and 10 seconds is way longer than you need. So um, you, you, you set your timer and you press the button. You know, yeah, wait for it. Oh, eventually it takes the photo. Um, this thing, of course, you just press the button, click, and it goes. So. Let's get this in the right place. Okay, I've got the light there. I'm going to get this in roughly the right sort of place. I've moved my composition. I've moved my focus. Let's refocus. There we go. Just focusing by eye. Right, I'm getting the light in the right place. And I'm going to do two different versions of this shot. So, first one there and I'll just take it again just to give myself some options okay that's three of that now the next thing I'm going to do is I am going to um, uh, I'm also going to try one of the things that there's that is a problem with this light it's got very hard edges and I don't really want um, this light to be too visible in the final shot I just want it to look like a sort of a blur of light and once you've seen it and you look at the promo shot, you might actually start to see the elements of how I took it in the promo shot. So maybe I shouldn't show you this, but um, what I am going to do now, because it's a sixth of a second, it's a long enough exposure that I can introduce just a little bit of movement to soften those edges. So I'm just going to shake the light a little bit like that in order to try and soften the edges of that light that appears in the reflection. So here we go again. And I managed to manage to bash the camera with the with the light as I took that. Let me just tweak that. Well, oh, there we go. Right. Here we go again. Okay. Two or three different versions there, um, and I only bashed the camera on about two of them, so one of them should be usable. And I'm just going to have a quick look. Just, this is called chimping, by the way. You may not have heard this phrase. Looking at the looking at the shot you've just taken is called chimping, and the reason it's called chimping is because when you get a good one, you tend to look at the back of the camera and go, "Ooh, ooh, ooh." So um, these are okay. These are all right. I might uh, take a couple more after I've turned off the video. But um, you've seen the basic setup. Um, you've seen the light I used. Um, you'll see in a moment when I put these into Lightroom how they look on the computer. So I will see you when we're back on the screencast. Photo Walkthrough is a free online video show about photography and digital photo editing using Photoshop and Lightroom. Join the Photo Walkthrough community, find all the old shows, and subscribe to the new ones for free at photowalkthrough.com.